You probably wouldn't imagine that these lake views would have anything to do with keeping students comfortable at a downtown campus. But that's exactly what's happening at George Brown's Limberlost Place. And the process starts at the bottom of Lake Ontario. There's these three intake pipes that go deep into the bottom of Lake Ontario, out five and a half kilometers out into the lake. They come back to a water filtration plant on Toronto Island. There the water is cleaned for drinking water purposes. That's completely operated by the City of Toronto, not by N-Wave. But that water then comes into a pumping station located over here at the John Street Pumping Station. Before it goes out to the tap for drinking water purposes, we actually borrow that water, pull the cooling energy out. It cools a closed loop district energy system that N-Wave operates in downtown Toronto and that delivers cooling to our customers. The technology also cools notable landmarks like the Scotiabank Arena, the Fairmont Royal York Hotel and Brookfield Place. Limberlost Place will be the first mass timber net zero building to be cooled and heated using N-Wave system. What's interesting about our low carbon heating system is it's actually leveraging that same cooling infrastructure that we talked about, that cooling loop that we use to cool buildings in downtown Toronto. In the winter time, we can take that waste heat energy when we cool a building, it comes back into our system as waste heat. We can take that waste heat energy, upgrade it through heat pumps using electricity, which are inherently low carbon, and then produce hot water from that. So that hot water now goes out to serve Limberlost, making it a, a, a low carbon building, an actual net zero low carbon building. George Brown College has made sustainability a huge focus when it comes to the mass timber 10-story academic building. The Deep Lake water cooling system is just a part of it. District energy really uh, means that we're, we're sharing energy, we're not using too much uh, or too little, but we're actually sharing that with the broader community, which is a um, really important concept in terms of sustainability and of resilience. We want to be at the forefront of technology. And so that's what Limberlost really represents, the technologies in the building, how sustainable it is. It really sets a bar and sets an example for the broader community and also is a living laboratory for our students to be able to learn within the building as well. Construction is set to wrap at the end of this year with plans to open the building in 2025. Talia Ricci, CBC News, Toronto.